<laughs> Hi, thanks for joining me for another tutorial from Sight Studios. My name is Tony, and today we're going to look into cloud brush text. So basically, that's just cloud text up in the sky. You might see something similar with an airplane riding. It's that kind of effect. It's very simple to do, quite easy, and a lot of fun. The first thing you're going to need to do is look in the underbar section for a link to a couple brush sets that you're going to need for this tutorial. I've linked them down there, so grab them and you need to install them into Photoshop. Now if you're unfamiliar with how to install a brush set, it's actually quite simple. Just open up Photoshop, in this case I'm in CS6, click on your brush tool, come up here to your brush properties flyaway, and bring that down. Come over here and click the little cog, and you're going to get a little flyout menu here come down to load brushes and there's my brushes that we're going to need for this tutorial so click the first one choose load and it will appear here and then do the same with the second one and they will appear in your brushes preset tool here so once that's done you're going to want to go ahead and create a new canvas so let's go ahead and choose new now for this tutorial I'm going to use a width of 1400 pixels by 700 pixels high and the resolution of 72 and you can just go ahead and choose OK. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is do some color picking. So we're going to come over here to our color boxes and we're going to choose for the foreground color it's going to be 0895 BC as in Charlie and then for our, our background color it's going to be 0 A is an apple E like Edward B like boy F like Frank F like Frank as you can see here okay and so we're gonna switch those back so we have a darker color in the foreground and our background color is lighter now we're gonna come up to our gradient tool if you don't see it right away it's in the same panel as your paint bucket tool and your 3d material drop tool if you're using extended so Make sure you have the gradient tool selected and we're going to come up here in this box here and we're going to make sure this first guy selected. We don't want radial, we want linear. And with that being done, we're just going to come up here to just about the top of the document, around to the middle, hold shift, click and drag down to the bottom and then let go. And now you see we have a slightly darker to lighter gradient coming down just like we want. So now that that's completed, what we're going to do is add some ambient clouds around the area. Now to do that, it's very simple. I'm going to leave my darker color picked for foreground, and I'm going to come up here to my brushes, click it, and I'm going to choose the preset properties tool, scroll down, and we see the brushes that we've added here in this case 663 going all the way to 424. So we're just going to randomly choose some and put them around the area. Now what I like to do is keep the darker stuff up at the top and get lighter as I go down to the bottom which would be a little bit more like a real cloud layout. And it's just perfectly random so feel free to do anything you want any way you want with any pattern style. Uh, you don't want to overuse the same brush too much but you just play with it to the way you like it and it all come out pretty nice when in the end here okay. Okay. now I'm gonna swap to my lighter color and I'm gonna come down and choose some of the other clouds here That's starting to look really cool all right. I'm gonna choose a few more And I'll go back to the darker just for a second and do one there and there. All right, now we've got our clouds, our ambient clouds set. And that's looking pretty good. The next thing we're going to want to do is create our text. Now, I did the clouds directly onto my background. I'm doing that because I'm pretty confident in what I'm doing. I'm, I'm used to it. But for people who aren't quite confident and might need to erase and start over with, I recommend making a new layer first before you put the clouds in and put them on the new layer. I'm just going ahead and doing it right on the background. 
but you can make a new layer and do it too. Now what we're going to need to do is grab our text tool and um, you can choose different fonts. I would recommend a script type font to make it look best. Now the one I'm going to go with is Lucida Handwriting. So let's find that in the list here. There we go. All right. Now let's change our foreground color to white. Obviously we want white for the clouds. And let's go ahead and type out our text. Alright, so now we've got our text. Let's go ahead and size it a little bit. Let's make it bigger. And the way I'm doing that, you can either change the font size or I'm turning on show transform controls and I'm just going to hold shift and drag it out a little bit to make it larger okay alright now I'm going to select the first layer and the background layer make sure I come up here and click my move tool and then I'm going to click align vertical and then I'm going to align horizontal also that puts it directly in the middle where I'd like it and then I'll click back on the text that we have here. So now what we're going to do since we've already loaded our brushes earlier we're going to choose one of the smoky brushes out of the selection and the way we do that is just come back up here before and let's go with say number 255. Now what we're going to need to do is change some of the shape dynamics for the brush settings. So you can hit F5 and bring up that menu and you want to make sure that you have a certain few options here checked so we're going to make sure shape dynamics is on we're going to want smoothing on and protect texture now this is CS6 if you have an earlier version it may look a little bit different but should be pretty close alright we're also going to want to uh, make a few other changes up here so if we click on shape dynamics we want to make sure our jitter is at about 60 percent alright we want to make sure control is set to pin pressure our minimum diameter is going to be zero percent our angle jitter is going to be about 80 okay. our control is off our roundness jitter is going to be about 25 percent control again is off and minimum roundness is also going to remain at 25 percent we don't have to check any of these boxes here but you should get a pretty good look at what that's going to look like down here in this little section so now that we've got that set we're gonna just use our brush we're gonna wanna just paint over the text now before you do that we need to rasterize it so right click rasterize the top all right, and then let's blow it up just a little bit we're gonna just use the magnification tool blow it up a little bit go back to our brush and we're just gonna size down the brush some because we're just gonna wanna go around and kinda paint over this area here and I'd recommend doing that on a new layer as well so Gonna go around doing that All right. and this part can take a few minutes so don't worry about that and remember we're just we're just painting over and you might need to adjust your brush size as needed
parts you feel might not have got enough or aren't quite right, go ahead and go back over them. Make it however you want it because you're in control here. It's going to look however you want it to look. So you know, make sure you go back and get all the edges that you think you might have missed that maybe didn't fill out all the way that you wanted. Okay. I should do it just like that. All right. Now we're going to click here on our magnifying glass and I'm going to go ahead and say 100% to zoom back out. All right, so it's looking pretty good so far. So let's turn off the original layer and see what it looks like. All right, so now we've got our writing in the clouds and I'm moving through this kind of fast just for the sake of the tutorial. You can spend a little more time on it, make it look a little cleaner and um space out the letters a little anything you kinda wanna do with it so what we're gonna do now is add uh, bevel and emboss to this um, because what we wanna do is kinda make it pop so when we come up let's choose the bevel and emboss and the way we do that is either by right clicking on the layer and choose blending options or just double click anywhere off the text on that layer and the layer styles will pop up so once we choose bevel and emboss we're going to make sure it's set to inner bevel smooth and we're going to go ahead and change our depth pretty high we're going to go up to about 460 and that's going to be up the size is going to be at about two and we're going to soften it to about four pixels we're going to go ahead and leave the angle at 120 we're going to use global light 30 on the degrees of altitude and we're not going to bother any of the next settings or leave it on screen multiply uh, opacity we're going to go ahead and bump up to 100 and we're going to put about 74 for the opacity here and we're going to change this color so click on this color box and when it pops up we're going to use 0 8 9 F like Frank, C like Charlie, and the number 2. And go ahead and take a look at that there, 089FC2. Go ahead and choose OK. All right. And that should be good. So let's go ahead and choose OK. And so far it's pre looking pretty good. Uh, but there's a few more things we can do to it. So we're going to add some retouches to this effect to make it slightly more sharpened. So what we're going to do is we're just going to flatten the whole image. So the easiest way to do that is just right click and just flatten the image. We're just going to flatten it all down. Alright, now that we've done so, we're going to go up here to our filter menu. And we're going to come down to sharpen and we're going to choose unsharpened mask. All right. Now the settings we're going to choose are going to be about 75 on the amount. The radius will stay at 1, the threshold at 0. And we're going to choose OK. All right. Now at this point, if you want, you can put in some more ambient clouds with the white that's selected. So this is totally optional, but choose your brush come back up here and we'll choose some of the white area here with the white brush we'll come in just lighten up a few things here and there there and you know size it the way you want it you can change the size um, very easily you can change it by clicking this little slider bar after you bring out the preset properties or open and close bracket will also do the same thing so in this case we don't want too big because we're gonna add just some little areas in here so what we want to do is just accent some of the darker tips like that and so that's pretty much it. I mean, play around with it however you want to do. You can add more clouds around it to make it look like it's floating out between two clouds. Um, but that's the general idea. And um, it's really simple and easy to do. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. There'll be more to come soon. 
And thanks for watching. You can check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash psych studios or follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash psych underscore studios. So once again, thanks for watching. This is Tony from Psych Studios and take care.